the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian people to defend themselves. We have to support them with uh, humanitarian, economic and also military aid. Secondly, we have to uh, decide on as possible, as much as possible, severe sanctions against uh, the Russian government. Uh, it's very important that uh, they feel that the price uh, they are paying for this aggression is uh, really significant, that this is not something like happened after they invaded Georgia in 2008 or after they occupied Crimea. And third thing, and I think this is the most important decision the European Union has to take as soon as possible, is to give to Ukraine uh, a real uh, European perspective. This means uh, not uh, speaking about uh, after uh, some time after decades. Uh, I think that uh, this should happen uh, until 2030, the latest. This is why, together with uh, Polish Prime Minister, uh, we signed a letter uh, to our colleagues, members of the European Council, also to the President of the Council, where we are proposing this. And we are proposing the same approach regarding enlargement also toward Moldova, Georgia, and uh, Western Balkan countries. Because we think that we have to learn from the history of the last decades that uh, if uh, the space of uh, liberty, uh, democracy, uh, respect for human rights, rule of law, is not enlarging, uh, somebody else does. Uh, and is somebody else is. And I think that we have to learn something from history, otherwise we will pay even higher price in the future. Who else signed this letter? It's the Polish and you? And who else? Because of the short time, and because of what, what uh, had been happening during uh, 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 yesterday evening, uh, <clears throat> there are only two si signatures uh, uh, behind this letter, but many other colleagues, especially colleagues from Baltics and Central Europe, also support this proposal. What is your position on SWIFT and gas? Excuse me? What is your position on SWIFT, including SWIFT in the packets and cutting the gas supply? Everything, as, as severe sanctions as possible. So we support uh, the most uh, possible severe package, because we are not speaking here about the economic growth, we are not speaking about uh, well, inflation being 5 or 6 percent, we are speaking about the human lives and people in Ukraine are dying and they are dying because of, of brutal Russian aggression. Why is it taking... Countries like Germany are too cautious when it comes to Ukraine. First of, first of all, I, I'm very glad when I heard that Germany is abandoning their support for Nord Stream 2. I think this is some kind of game changer. Uh, but we have to, uh, to make a step further. So uh, we uh, woke up in different Europe, in different world today, and we have to act according to a new situation. So uh, speaking about sanctions, as we know, sanctions from recent history is not enough. Why is it taking sending... so long for the EU to announce new measures? Because the invasion started early this morning at 5 a.m. As far as as far as I know, there are two reasons. First is that uh, this package is really huge, and the second reason is that European Union is coordinating this with our uh, allies in the United States and across the world. And this is necessary if we want uh, these sanctions to really work. If you sending afraid? weapons to the Ukraine is a good idea, it will maybe just further escalate the situation. Uh, well, history is teaching us that uh, the West uh, prevailed in the Cold War because of two things. First, because uh, uh, the free world uh, organized uh, its own defense inside of the NATO which prevented uh, communist regime to spread across the Western Europe. But this was not the final victory. The final victory happened with the, with the uh, system 
the Western Europe established. And because of this system of freedom, people escaped from the East to the West. And this was the final defeat for the Soviet regime. And this is exactly what Putin is afraid to happen when people will compare the living standard in free and European Ukraine with the living standard of Russia. Are you afraid there could be even further escalation? There's talk of decapitating the government. I spoke with the Ukrainian Prime Minister this uh, morning, and he told me that he is 100% sure that the, the real aim of this aggression is to decapitate the, the Ukrainian state and to install the puppet government. Uh, and, and if we are following the, the moves of the troops on the ground, then we see that this is really happening. But I think that uh, situation now is different than it was in 2014. Ukraine is fighting, and I, uh, I hope uh, they will insist. They will defend themselves, because if they don't uh, defend themselves, and we have to help them also with arms to defend themselves, then uh, no sanctions, not speaking about the European future, is, uh, is helping. So time is now. Do, do you fear, however, for, for his safety? Uh, Zelensky says he's not going to leave Kiev, that he's going to fight, and they're going to fight it out with or without weapons. Do you fear for his safety? Well, uh, we fear for the safety of all Ukrainian people, uh, also especially for the government, because the Ukrainian government is obviously the target of this aggression. But I hope they are prepared. Uh, Slovenia was in a similar situation 30 years ago. We know how they feel. This is why we are speaking about the solidarity with the Ukraine, you know, uh, slightly differently than some others who don't have the same experiences. We, we know <laughs> by heart how they are feel. And uh, we hope they will stay safe, they will survive, uh, and they will prevail. And, and we and do everything what we can to help them. And Mr. Jansa, uh, the Ukrainian foreign minister said, if you don't approve the SWIFT sanctions to be on this package, you have blood in your hands. You need to cut the Russians out of the SWIFT system. Do you agree with that promise or that premise? I think this is one of, 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 the, of the decisions we have to take, but there are deci other decisions. The most important decisions, which is not on the European Union, but mostly on NATO, is to close airspace about the Ukraine, because the, the Ukrainians will have much, much better chances to defend themselves if Russia is not controlling totally the airspace. We all know this from the history, and we have to, uh, to act according to the facts. Thank you. Do you think that President Macron was perhaps too naive in negotiating with President Putin? Uh, well, first of all, uh, it's good to negotiate because uh, everything is better than war. But beating, uh, but beating uh, Mr. Putin in uh, negotiations, uh, if you know that he is on the stage for decades and uh, all other European leaders are very fresh, is a wishful thinking. So uh, whenever you go to Moscow, you should know that uh, there are differences between the words and its. Thank, Thank you very you. much.